Prophet dealt with the situation of an enemy from jinn and mankind. The shayateen from jinn and mankind. Right? And this battle against the shaytan is not something which is new. This battle started with the beginning of creation of mankind. And we know in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when describing the shaytan, doesn't use light terminology. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the shaytan as our enemy. And I know when we think of the term enemy, we may think of someone who like hates us or someone who doesn't like us or someone who intends bad for us or evil for us. Or we may even look at uh, people who are oppressive towards Muslims or towards mankind. When we, like, when we may think of that person as our enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that before any of those people who, who have ill will towards us, any of the, any, anyone in the world who wants to harm us and to bring us pain and all of that, there is an enemy on top of all of those enemies and that is the shaytan. Inna shaytana lakum adu. Allah says that the shaytan is most certainly an enemy for you. The problem for us, my brothers and sisters, is that many of us, we've read this ayah. I believe it's in Surah Fatir. We've read this ayah before. We've heard that the shaytan is our enemy. The problem is that, number one, we don't understand what it means to say that the shaytan is our enemy. Number two, we are extremely complacent when it comes to the topic of the shaytan. Right? Many of us, we don't even consider how the shaytan even affects our life. Like we go through our lives, and often I say this to my class when we talk about the shaytan, I, I pose the question, when was the last time you woke up in the morning and you said to yourself, today I will take the shaytan as my enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times in the Quran refers to the shaytan as the enemy of mankind. And this ayah, your enemy. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you, He's not referring to people. The Quran is supposed to be a direct conversation with us. So when we hear, I do what lakum for you, we're supposed to ask ourselves a question and say, how is he an enemy for me? Many of us, we don't even know what that means. If I were to say to you right now, write down for me 10 ways in which the shaytan is your enemy. I don't know how long it would take for us to answer that question. Or if I were to say to you, Write down 10 ways for me in which the shaytan directly influences your life. I think we'd have a hard time coming up with 10 ways. And have no doubt that the shaytan influences our life in many more than 10 ways. And this is why if you go through the Quran and the Sunnah, you see mention after mention after mention of the shaytan. The shaytan influences our life in many more ways than we even imagine. If we were to ask the shaytan, if we were to talk to the shaytan, we would understand that he has one goal. His goal in life is to make sure that everyone in creation, all of the children of Adam, end up in the hellfire. He has vowed to send the children of Adam to the, to the hellfire. And when, the, when we say the children of, Ad, the children of Adam, the children of Adam السلام, it doesn't mean just Muslims. Every single person in creation have no doubt that the shaytan is actively working to send these people to the hellfire. From the very beginning of creation, Allahu alam how long, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, the shaytan has been working to, to mislead mankind. And he's been learning. And this is why the shaytan, he understands two very, very dangerous things about us. He understands our fears and he understands our desires. And when you can, under, when you can understand, when you know somebody's fears and desires, that's, that's, that's a very powerful tool to control someone. And the shaytan has access to bo both. He's been learning and studying us for that very long time. And this is why if you look in the Quran, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually tells us of conversations that took place between Allah and Iblis and the shaytan. Why are those conversations there? Sometimes we think they're just stories, right? We're like, we hear that the Iblis said this and that, and he refused to prostrate to Adam. We think that they're just stories. 
But the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the speech of shaitan is for us to understand how the shaitan is our enemy and it's for us to understand how we can protect ourselves. Because the shaitan in the beginning of creation, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, at that point he vowed to mislead man. Oh